Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. In this episode we'll be taking a look at more pseudosuchians, namely the large carnivorous genera formerly classified within the broad grouping of Rauisuchia, first emerging in the Middle Triassic, or perhaps even the Early Triassic. The so-called Rauisuchians were the apex predators of their time, potentially measuring up to 8 metres or 26 feet long. Possessing robust, boxy skulls equipped with blade-like teeth, semi-erect limbs and a wide distribution, these animals preyed on the contemporary dicynodonts, aetosaurs and basal sauropodomorph dinosaurs. Once considered to be a large, genuine clade, recent studies from the 2010s have challenged this view, suggesting that Rauisuchia, as formerly defined, was something of a wastebasket into which many large, carnivorous pseudosuchians were placed. Instead, in a paper published in 2011, Nesbitt et al. conclude that the Rauisuchians were actually an evolutionary grade sitting at the base of Loricata, the sister lineage to the bizarre poposauroids that have been covered in a previous video on this channel. Loricata is a highly diverse clade that also includes modern crocodilians, plus many, many extinct groups, with members defined by the possession of certain anatomical traits, including tall, narrow eye sockets, four teeth in the premaxilla of the upper jaw, a ridge on the squamosal bone at the rear of the skull, and a distinctive ridge on the fibula. The most basal member of Loricata so far described is the genus Decuriosuchus from the Middle Triassic of Brazil circa 240 to 235 million years ago. A slender quadrupedal carnivore measuring approximately 2.5 metres or 8.2 feet long, this animal's name means Legion of Ten Crocodile, which refers to the ten known specimens of the genus found in association. This interesting discovery may suggest that this represents the remains of a social group, or at least a congregation of individuals similar to those found in modern crocodilians. If this is the case, then it is the earliest known example of archosaur group behaviour known in the fossil record. In the paper describing the genus, Marco Aurelio et al. found that the next most basal loricartum was Tichinosuchus, the pseudosuchian of previously uncertain placement. This ten-foot animal was native to Italy and Switzerland during the Middle Triassic, and was broadly similar to Decuriosuchus in terms of appearance, being a slender, carnivorous hunter. Curiously, Tichinosuchus was completely covered in osteoderms, including the belly, the holotype specimen is remarkably complete due to being preserved in coastal Lagerstarter deposits. The legs were relatively elongated and positioned in a near vertical posture, suggesting that the genus was a fast, agile runner. Preserved summit contents include fish scales, which suggest at least a partially piscivorous diet, although small land-based prey would have likely been taken as well. At this time, Central Europe was covered by shallow, epicontinental seas dotted with small islands on which Tichinosuchus made its home. More derived than these animals were a collection of significantly larger forms, the most basal of which was the genus Prestosuchus. Along with its close relative Saurosuchus, this animal was a member of the potential family Prestosuchidae. Native to the Santa Maria Formation of Brazil approximately 242 to 235 million years ago, Prestosuchus had a deep skull and serrated teeth. Initially, it was estimated to be around 5 metres, or 17 feet long, but a specimen recovered in 2010 suggests that Prestosuchus reached lengths of nearly 7 metres, or 23 feet, making it one of the largest Triassic pseudosuchians. The animal is known from multiple specimens housed in German and Brazilian museums, and as such its appearance and anatomical features are well represented. The skull was proportionally large and robust, while the limbs were arranged in the so-called pillar erect stance typical of early pseudosuchians. Unlike many of its distant poposauroid relatives, Prestosuchus was a quadrupedal animal that hunted herbivorous prey by ambush, including early sauropodomorph dinosaurs such as Saturnalia and the Aetosaur, Aetosauroides. Its sister genus Saurosuchus was a very similar animal, being the apex predator of the late Triassic Ischigualasto formation of Argentina. Initially estimated to measure 5.5 metres or 18 feet long, the presence of larger fragmentary specimens indicates a potential maximum length of 25 feet. The teeth were blade-like, serrated and recurved, being attached to a robust and laterally compressed skull. The neck was short but powerful and heavily muscled, 
allowing this predator to rip chunks of flesh from its prey by shaking its head from side to side. Saurosuchus was by far the largest carnivore in its environment, and would have feathered animals such as the Rhynchosaur Hyperadapodon, the bipedal Poposauroid Silosuchus, and the buffalo-sized Dicynodont Ischigualastia. Puncture marks have also been found on the skull of a Herrerasaurus individual, suggesting that Saurosuchus also preyed upon this early carnivorous dinosaur, possibly in a dispute over food. All inhabited a warm, lush coastal region prone to strong seasonal changes in rainfall. A slightly more derived genus, Batrachotomus, dwelt in the Middle Triassic of southern Germany roughly 242 to 237 million years ago. With an unusual name, meaning something like frog slicer, this animal was also a large quadrupedal carnivore and the apex predator in its ecosystem. It measured 6 metres or 20 feet in length and walked in a semi-erect posture, with the limbs positioned almost vertically beneath the body. This would have enabled Batrachotomus to be an agile runner, chasing after any of the vertebrates with which it shared its environment including the long-necked Tanistrophius and the Temnus bondyls Mastodontosaurus and Gerothorax. The presence of these semi-aquatic animals, as well as the abundant fossilised remains of ferns, horsetails and cycads at the site, indicates that southern Germany was a wet, humid region at the time, bordering the ancient Paleotethys Ocean. Meanwhile, the enormous Fasola Sucus was an inhabitant of the Los Colorados formation of northwestern Argentina. Dating to the Norian stage of the Late Triassic, approximately 217 million years ago, this genus was quite possibly the largest terrestrial carnivore of the entire period. Potentially measuring up to 10 metres, or 33 feet long, this massive quadruped possessed a robust skull equipped with dagger-like teeth and preyed upon contemporary sauropodomorph dinosaurs such as Lesemsaurus and Riochosaurus. Smaller predators that lived in the same environment included Zupesaurus, an 18-foot basal neotheropod, slightly more basal than Dilophosaurus. This animal would have avoided competition with the much larger Pseudosuchian by targeting smaller prey. Fasolosuchus, in addition to being the largest Triassic terrestrial carnivore so far described, was also one of the last of the basal Loricartan predators outside of the more derived family Rawasuchidae. In life, this animal must have been a pretty impressive and intimidating sight. Speaking of Rawasuchids, this contentious group contains the last of the big predatory terrestrial Pseudosuchians before the end Triassic extinction event. Up to 13 genera have been placed in this family, although many of these are known from either dubious or highly scrappy remains. Recent studies have identified just five genera that can be confirmed as unequivocal Rawasuchids, with the oldest of these being Rawasuchus itself. Present in the mid to late Triassic Santa Maria formation of Brazil between 235 and 205 million years ago, this animal was a 4 metre or 14 foot long carnivore and weighed approximately 550 pounds. Although relatively large, Rawasuchus was not the apex predator in its environment and played second fiddle to the more massive Prestosuchus. It would also have competed with other archosaurs, such as Proterochampsids and early carnivorous dinosaurs, including Storicosaurus and Nathovorax. A closely related genus, Teratosaurus, was native to Bavaria during the Norian stage and was first described in 1861. Until the mid-1980s, this animal was considered to be a very early large theropod, but was reclassified as a Rawasuchid by Galton and Benton. The best known member of the group by far was the famous Postosuchus, an animal represented from multiple individual specimens recovered from Arizona to North Carolina, and made notorious by its appearance in the first episode of Walking with Dinosaurs. Its name refers to Post Quarry in Arizona, a locality in which many individuals of the type species Postosuchus kirkpatrickii have been found. Postosuchus was one of the largest carnivorous reptiles during the Late Triassic. Adults reached about 1.2 metres or 3.9 feet in height, 4 metres or 13 feet in length, and their mass might have ranged between 250 to 300 kilograms or 550 to 660 pounds. It had a massively built skull bearing dagger-like teeth. The neck was elongated, expanding to a short torso and long tail. Along with the remains of the skeleton, paleontologists have also identified osteoderms belonging to the genus. With the forelimbs being approximately 64% of the hind limbs in length, 
Postosuchus had small hands bearing five toes. Only the first toe bore a large claw, which was likely used as an offensive weapon, and the forelimbs were robust, probably to help hold struggling prey. The feet were much larger than the hands, with the fifth metatarsal forming a hook shape. Being a pseudosuchian, the heel and ankle of Postosuchus resembled those of modern crocodiles, with an enlarged calcneal spur. The limbs were held in a near vertical position beneath the body, with extensive debate taking place as to whether this genus walked quadrupedally or bipedally. Until relatively recently, it was thought that Postosuchus was primarily a quadruped, but a 2013 paper published by J. Weinbaum et al. concluded that the genus may have been an obligate biped, based on evidence from the anatomy of the digits, vertebrae and pelvis. The proportions of the limbs and weight-bearing sections of the spine were very similar to many theropod dinosaurs, nearly all of which are thought to have been strictly bipedal. It is currently unknown if other Rawasukids possess similar degrees of bipedalism due to the more fragmentary nature of their fossil remains. In life, Postosuchus lived in hot, tropical ecosystems with fairly abundant water sources, and preyed on contemporary herbivores such as Trilophosaurus and the Aetosaur type of thorax. The genus was highly successful, ranging between 221 to 203 million years ago, most likely dying out due to the end Triassic extinction event, being the youngest known Rawasukid. A far more poorly known member of the family also dwelt in the Norian of the US Southwest, and was only formally described in 2016. The genus was named Vivaron, and its holotype specimen, a collection of jaws and skull fragments, was uncovered at the famous Ghost Ranch site in New Mexico. Additionally, another close relative of Postosuchus also lived in what is now Poland. Named Polonosuchus and dating to the Carnian stage of the Late Triassic between 237 and 227 million years ago, this animal was actually larger than its more famous cousin at up to 6 metres long. Polonosuchus was the apex predator in its environment and would have preyed on large dicynodonts and silosaurids. Rawasukids, despite their success and wide geographic range, one of the many casualties of the end Triassic extinction event. It is currently still debated as to why so many large terrestrial pseudosuchians died out at this time, while the contemporary dinosaurs were little affected. Proposed theories pertaining to some kind of inherent superiority in non-avian dinosaur respiration have been met with scepticism in recent years. Regardless, the demise of the Rawasukids allowed the early theropods to expand in size going into the Jurassic, producing forms such as the iconic Dilophosaurus. The age of the Rawasukians was over, although Pseudosuchians as a whole would still have a very bright future ahead of them in the Mesozoic. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode on the Mastodons will actually be posted next Sunday, as I'll be on holiday the following weekend. I hope that's okay with everyone. See you again soon.